Hello everyone this is part 8 of what if Naruto loses control, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. That morning Naruto had woken up for the first time in a human bed. Not one made of twigs and leaves, not one made of pillows found in trash cans, but a real firm and the same time soft bed with sheets to keep warm. Last night after another grueling day of training he had made it to his new home exhausted. After spending the last four days with Sakura and Sasuke training, sometimes even without Kakashi's supervision. As he climbed the last steps to his front door he felt the accolation of his hard work had worn him out. So without thinking much, Naruto came in and striped his old tattered clothes off and dropped them as he stumbled into the house. The first thing on his mind was water, so he stuck his head under the sink. Then next was food, so he grabbed what was left over from a meal he attended with Team S and quickly ate the barbecued beef. The next thought was to get rid of the stench he had built up from the sweat and dirt stuck to his body from the last couple of days. It was strange, but Naruto never noticed before just how much this body started to smell. It was like the older he got the smellier he got too. So after sniffing his armpit to confirm his odor he had made his way to the master bedroom with a sliding wall door that led to the garden in the back. The private garden had bonsai trees growing out of the rocks, a private enclosed wood stained fence, and a small hot spring bath. After climbing in and finding a stone to sit on, he finally felt his body start to unwind and relax. He stayed there until he was just about to fall asleep, and slowly in a haze got out and shook himself almost dry. At this point with him being as tired as he was mixed with the solid warmth in his body from his soak, he fell into the bed without thinking and curled up into the blankets. As his eyes open he looks around to get his bearings, and everything he did when he got home last night flashed through his mind. Slowly sitting up he began his usual stretching routine, and found that his back muscles weren't in knots. And his bones didn't need to be popped, he even noticed the heavy stiff feeling in his rib cage he normally felt from sleeping on floors was missing too. Twisting his body out of the sheets he wrapped himself up in, Naruto springs to his feet and walks over to look at himself in the mirror. He felt different, and looking he could see the growth in his muscles over the last month. But looking at himself more closely he could see more of the recent changes. Looking at his face he could see that the sunken spaces that showed his bones had filled in, and looking at his body he saw the same. No more rib cage sticking out, and no hip bones to grab. After Team S had began doing so many high-rank missions Naruto found himself with way more money than he was used to. Growing up he never used so much money before, and he would never have found enough places willing to sell anything to him. But as he walked the streets in the last month while trying to hold onto and count his wads of cash, he noticed something that never happened before. When walking the markets of Kanoa merchants would always call out to people walking by to come buy their products. Melons, so you want to buy these melons. Fresh fish delivered today, low prices excellent quality. Over here Sunny, we have lunch specials come on in. Ninja supplies, get your gear here, I've got kunai, shuriken, sharpening stones, you need it we got it, come over sir. It took him a while to realize that all the loud voices had been talking to him. People who wouldn't even looked at him before were looking at him now. Or, if they were brave enough they used to give him dirty looks or tell him to stay away, but now were now trying to get him to shop. And with all the training he had been doing lately he was hungrier than normal, so he spent most of his money on food. He filled his kitchen's refrigerator with food, even went around trying some of the restaurants that had smelled of cooking meat. But the one he had gone several times already was the one Aruka had taken him to long ago, that Ichiraku ramen is still the best food these humans have to offer. Maybe he'll get a bowl of that heaven broth before going to the academy. Naruto turns away from the mirror on the wall of his bedroom and went through the house to find his clothes. The ones he stripped off him last night reminded him of just how bad he smelled when he got home, so he throws them down the hall where the old washer and dryer were. Then the thought of what he discussed with Team S the other day had come back to him. They had gone to eat at barbecue restaurant that was the favorite of one of Kakashi's friends. 
Kakashi spoke to them about the upcoming Chunin exams as they sat at the table with a grill in the center cooking the meat brought to them. I can't tell you too much about the upcoming exams, but what you should know already is you're going to be pitted up against other ninja. You're going to need to use everything you have learned to pass the challenges presented to you. And a big part of that is going to be your teamwork. The better you three are at working together the better your chances are of making it through. Sakura had finished her last bite and turned a concerned gaze on the Jonin, it sounds almost as if you're worried sensei, I mean the people usually die in this exam. Kakashi had turned his lazy eye on her and without any change said, yes, many of the ninja who come to this village to try and become Chunin will die. Some if they're lucky will be just be injured enough to be disqualified. And by the end of the exam there will be only 10% left of those who began. Like always when Kakashi says something heavy he waits just long enough for the information to sink in. But, after working with each of you during both your training and missions I have seen how much you each have improved. And am confident that each of you will do me proud. They then spent the rest of dinner planning and asking questions of each other. Each of them agreed at the end of dinner to spend the rest of their time running drills and planning for possible fights to come. Kakashi had recommended they take the day off but they ended up training anyway until each were at their limits. And just before dispersing, Sakura turned to Sasuke and Naruto and said, Hey guys, you know what will really get the other teams talking and make them even more scared of us. After hearing no response from either of the boys she continued, We wear our armor and clothes given to us by the Fire Lord, it will make us stand out but will also make the ninja sweat a little at our appearance. Sasuke and Naruto were too tired to think about any reasons why they shouldn't, and they agreed to wear them as they dispersed. So Naruto went to the his room again and put on fresh underwear, then stood in front of the sliding panel door where he found a wooden dummy made for holding someone's clothing and armor in place. Taking the clothes he puts on the red-orange pants first, he bends down to roll up the pant legs to tie them off just under his leather padded kneecaps. Next he puts on his usual ninja wire mesh shirt with leather pieces segmented over his vital spots. And next was the heavy kimono-like top that crosses his chest like a kimono but had a zipper going up to the wide Uchiha-style collar. Naruto sees this and like last time folds the collar in half to have it wrap around his neck like his old jacket did. And last came the armor. He had taken the piece of orange fabric with the flame design he was wearing with his old clothes and sewn it around the waist of the armor. So when Naruto stepped back from the mirror to look at himself he stood there with his red armor and red-orange clothes with the ripped fabric around his waist just covering the top side of his shin guards. He looked like he was ready for war. I guess Sakura was right. I look menacing, in a noble way. But the real affect of how he looked was apparent to him as he walked through the village on his way to meet his team on the little bridge they always met at. Until now he hadn't worn his new outfit in the village, and the street merchants and villagers would stop and stare as he walked past. Little children would point and adults would be in such total awe that they were speechless. After turning the last corner he walks out on the bridge to find Sasuke and Sakura already standing there in their armor waiting for him. Without many words they start walking in the direction of the academy. And if Naruto thought he was getting some impressed looks, he hadn't seen anything until they were walking together. The whole street's activities would stop, People would stare, wave, and even groups of them started to cheer and clap while yelling, Go Team Sharingan. But they kept their cool like they practiced during training. Not letting anything around them affect them as they marched together through the streets and up to the front doors of the academy. Walking inside they moved straight towards the stairs since they needed to climb three flights of steps and two stairwells to get to room 304. And on their way up the stairs the sounds of people arguing just outside the second floor door can be heard. So acting like elite ninja they move to the walls while Sasuke cracks the door just enough to see the cause of the commotion. On the other side of the door the hallway leading to the other class rooms was full of other ninja. Most were whispering among themselves while the furthest away seemed to be arguing and getting hit by two ninja guarding room 304. Sasuke lets Sakura and Naruto know what's going on and they start planning on how they are going to attack. Sakura walked up to the door peering into the hall and activating her Sharingan to use her Genjutsu. But before she can cast her Jutsu she turns back and whispers what she has learned from her look of the hall. There was a Genjutsu already in place making the sign for room 204 appear to be room 304. 
and the guards were two ninja disguised by a henge. They agreed it looked like a delaying tactic, so they axed planner and go with the new plan B. The two Chunin who were guarding the door kept smiling evilly while they smacked the Genin around. You think this is rough, huh? The exam's probably going to kill everyone here. Yeah, you babies should just turn around right now. If you can't get past us then you're gonna be wiped out anyway. So go home now. The boy who had just been punched in the face for the third time slowly stood up with the help of his female teammate. He straightens his green bodysuit and bows, please let us pass, we need to turn in our application forms. The Chunin smiles and was about make fun of the kid for his hair cut, when all of a sudden something feels like it grabs the top of his head and slams it hard into the door frame behind him. His partner thinks that the bowl cut headed weirdo in the green spandex suit had just hit his friend so he grabs the surprised boy by the wrist and hurls him over his head down the side hallway towards the stairs leading up. Everyone AIs follow the path of the boy's flight, and the strangest thing happens. Just before the boy fell to the floor it sounds like he shrieks like a girl and when the sound of his fall to the ground reaches their ears they all hear the clang of metal. And even stranger, as everyone stares they realize that it looks like he is floating on air. And to make everyone even more shocked, they see the green clad boy suddenly raise into the air as if an invisible noose was lifting him by the neck and at the same time they heard an enraged yell, cha. And to answer everyone's inner questions, Sakura dropped her invisibility jutsu with the sound of crackling electricity and yells, look where you're going you bowl cut freak. Sakura gives his throat a harder squeeze before she drops him and when the boy looks back up two more ninja rematerialize next to her. Why did you do that Sakura? It was your idea to walk past these idiots without being detected. Sakura turns an angry glare on Sasuke and says, you're blaming me. If it wasn't for Naruto wanting to hit that guy over there then he wouldn't have thrown Leotard boy here, so shut up Sasuke. Naruto had started laughing as soon as Sakura had started scolding Sasuke, and you shut up too Naruto, it's not funny. But when Sakura looked at Naruto she noticed he wasn't even looking at her. He was laughing near hysterics while pointing at the boy in the green spandex. And when Sakura followed Naruto's hand to look at the boy she was taken back because the boy's face had turned a rosy color and there were actual little pink hearts in his eyes. The implications of the boy looking at her this way came popping into her head making her face turn horrified looking. Then she was utterly repulsed when Naruto said through laughs, oh look at him, this is the number one reason why you don't wear spandex, look at the tent, h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a-h-a. Other ninja in the background had started laughing and pointing too, then out of the crowd walked an older teen in a tanned shirt wearing some extra headband under his headband. Walking next to the boy was a girl the same age with her hair tied up into two tight buns and wearing a pink Chinese shirt. Both had stern expressions on their faces and the boy started to talk to his teammate. This is why I told you that it was a bad idea to try so hard to hide our power Lee. The girl bent down to try and lift up the love struck boy, come on Lee, stop embarrassing us. Team S turned back to the stairs to go up again when the boy in the tan shirt yells, hey you, rookie. All three stop and turn halfway to face the team. You there, in the blue. Don't you think armor is a little old fashioned, huh? So what's your name anyway? Sasuke narrows his eyes at the boy but doesn't answer the teen until he asks, what, cat got your tongue? Why should I tell you my name when you haven't given yours first? I don't feel the need to answer someone with my name when they're being so rude. Sasuke turns his back on the teen and opens the door to the next hallway with Sakura and Naruto following behind. Sakura was in such a hurry to get away from the boy in green that she hurried past Sasuke and kept walking even when she went the wrong way down a flight of steps and didn't stop until she got to the middle of the open room. Naruto and Sasuke had sent questioning looks at Sakura's back, but only Sasuke had followed her down. Naruto instead stayed up top leaning on the railing overlooking the open space Sasuke and Sakura were now standing. Sasuke looked up again to make sure Naruto was just staring off in the distance looking bored, instead of paying attention to them. What's the matter Sakura? She keeps her back turned to him and scoffs, what, isn't it pretty obvious? That was disgusting. The way that guy was looking at me. Sasuke starts to get impatient with her, oh come on, all he did was fall on you. And as far as I can tell he has the hots for you. So boohoo, now you know how I fee.
but he never had a chance to finish that last word. Korsakura had turned around in a blur to point a finger in his face. Don't you dare compare it to the way those girls look at you. You have no idea what it is like for a girl to be looked at like that. You may know what it's like for someone to be enamored with you, or to stare into your eyes showing you how much of a crush they may have. But when you mender it, especially when you point one of those at us, it makes us uncomfortable in a way you couldn't understand. Sasuke again was surprised by her response. And in this moment Sasuke realizes that the old Sakura he knew wasn't putting on an act anymore, the old fangirl Sakura was gone. This realization makes Sasuke understand why he came down here to talk to her, he actually cared. And the next thoughts Sasuke had were on what Sakura had just said. And thinking about it, the look the boy gave Sakura did disgust him more. Sakura I. Hey you, with the A-T-U-D-E. Sakura and Sasuke look up at the same time and turn to face the boy in the green spandex standing next to Naruto who was looking at him while still leaning on his elbows with his cheek on his fist looking bored. I want to fight here and now. And without waiting for a response he jumps over the second story the railing and lands in a crouch. As he stands he lifts his fist up to point a thumb at his head and say, I am Rock Lee. I heard you say earlier that you didn't tell your name to rude people. And now since I have introduced myself it should be no problem for you to tell me yours. However, I already know your name. So did my teammate that spoke to you. After all it is hard not to notice the famed teen Sharingan, am I right Sasuke Uchiha? Sasuke's only response was to narrow his eyes at his challenger. And I also have this to say. Shifting his stance to face Sakura she cringes as his face turns rosy again, you must be Sakura, I must tell you from the moment I saw you, I love you. Sakura's nerves had had enough and she starts to scream and call Lee names, oh come on you met me three minutes ago you caterpillar eyebrow bowl cut weirdo, how could you possibly love me? And not only that, but how could I be interested in a guy whose fashion sense consists of a one-piece spandex suit? You look like the special needs kid in a school play they got to play a cactus. Lee's face mirrored childlike disappointment as he mumbles, you do not have to be so mean Sakura, but strength and fire returns to his eyes as he fills himself with the ninja way of his sensei, the power of youth. Nevertheless Sakura, I will prove my love to you by being your protector and showing you that I am worthy. For now take this as the token of my love, Maya. The next thing that happens starts a string of events that none of them will be able to explain, ever. When Rock Lee brings his hand palm up under his chin and blows AK at Sakura, a tiny little floating heart appears and flies on course for Sakura's face. Sakura in her shock of this strange squishy heart-shaped missile screams and dodges the heart to hear it stick to the wall behind her with a wet smack. Hey, keep those gross things to yourself, I don't want your love and I certainly don't need your protection so get lost. You're like my personal little beautiful Sakura Blossom, let me show you my love. Lee raises his hand up again and proceeds to make over 10 flying hearts aimed at Sakura. Again panic makes her scream as she thinks about dodging the Valentine missiles. So without thinking she activated her Sharingan with a scared urgency thinking strongly, N-O-O-O, don't touch me. And what happens next is a pulse of red chakra erupts from her eyes sending out an all-encompassing wave of red light that destroys the little hearts and fills the room. After the rapidly moving wave of light passes over Lee and Naruto it disappears not harming either of them. Naruto is the first to break the silence, what the hell was that, strobe light jutsu. Lee pumps a fist and declares, leave it to Sakura to come up with an ingenious solution in a moment's notice. Sakura was going to yell at Lee again, but Sasuke takes a couple of steps over and forward to stand in front of Sakura. That's enough you weird little freak, you're keeping us from entering the Chunin exams, and you're lucky I have no intention of fighting you here to get me disqualified. So off. Sasuke then starts to turn around but then he hears, I did not come here thinking the Uchiha were going to be cowards. This got Sasuke to stop and glare back as Lee continued, in fact, I thought of running into you and test myself against the one the village has been talking so much about. But since you have no honor, I guess you can't be all that great. Sasuke stood his ground staring down Lee, and after he sends Sakura the patented niece guy pose with the sparkle in his teeth Sasuke says, fine, let's fight. Sasuke leaps forward into a sprint activating his Sharingan as he ran while Lee just smiles at him and stands tall with one hand behind his back and the other open in front of him, almost like an invitation. 
and Sasuke's confidence in winning suddenly plummets when he sends what he thought was a fast punch at Lee's head, only for Lee's hand to move like lightning. And almost too fast for him to see, Lee brings his hand up and down striking with fingertips to the B-trigger pressure point on the top of Sasuke's hand. The pain makes his hand go numb and sends the momentum of his punch off to the side making him roll into a crouch and turn around in time to take a back kick to his arms crossed on his chest. The hit sends Sasuke flying back to impact the wall six feet behind him, and thanks to his new armor he barely felt the strikes. But Sasuke has very little time to react when his Sharingan shows him that his face is about to be punched. As fast as Sasuke can, he dodges to his right with Lee's punch just barely grazing his ear. And in quick succession Lee sends punches that leave holes in the walls where Sasuke's head was. Sasuke then crouches to send two punches into Lee's gut but the team with the big eyebrows brings his two hands together and quickly drops them between Sasuke's arms in two low blocks sending his arms wide. And before Sasuke can stop what he can see is going to happen next Lee grabs him behind the neck and pulls his head forward into Lee's knee strike. The shock and pain in his nose and forehead makes Sasuke close his eyes, and during that time Lee leans back pulling Sasuke with him. When Lee's back rolls on the ground he slams two feet into Sasuke's armored belly sending him flying into the air. Rolling backwards to his feet, Lee flexes his muscles in his crouch before leaping into the air after his opponent. This is it guy sensei, I will defeat the ones you warned me about early in the exam to strike fear into them and prove to the ninja world that a team of people with natural talent can be defeated by the one who had to earn that talent. And your teammates will see it Sasuke. Especially you Sakura, please watch me while I prove myself to you. Sasuke was aware what was happening to him, and sensing Lee appear just behind his back while flying through the air he said it. Dancing Leaf Shadow. Yes, now see how you're not superior to me. And the next thing Sasuke can see is the bindings around Lee's wrists come undone and spin like ribbons twisted by an Olympic gymnast. And as the bindings twist even more and start to surround Sasuke all he can do against the blinding fast techniques is wait. But luck was on Sasuke's side when out of nowhere a deep man's voice yells, Stop right there Lee. Lee takes in a quick gasp of air and flips backwards back down to the floor while Sasuke continued the path of his fall only to land in a crouch with his hands on the floor. Sakura and Naruto had both walked over to Sasuke who was shakily getting to his feet. Naruto was about to make fun of Sasuke, but he and everyone was distracted by the loud but strange voice of Guy Sensei. Lee. You know that the technique is forbidden and your actions are even worse. Attacking a ninja right before entering the exams and letting him see one of your best techniques is one of the first things I have ever taught you not to do. It was very unyouthful of you. So now for your punishment. And with a left hook punch, Guy sends Lee flying with a trail of blood coming out of his nose while calling him a little fool. Team S was confused, so confused that all three of them had their mouths open in shock. And the next part confused him even more. The strange Jonan that appeared to be the original genetic material for the clone called Rock Lee walks over to his student, and with tears in each of their eyes began to hug and cry out their apologies. And to make the whole scene even more unbelievable, behind him a glowing fog appears and clears to reveal a beautiful sunset scene on a beach playing out behind him as each spandex wearing ninja continued to call out each other's name. Then as if the genjutsu that was created by their corniness had some electrical difficulties, it sputtered and blinked out of existence when a pulse of red light went through it. Both green-clad ninjas blinked through their tears in confusion looking around until they saw Sakura's angry expression as the red light fades from her eyes. What the hell is going on here? First this guy comes out of left field and challenges S-A-S-U-K-E while trying to come onto me, and now you guys start hugging, crying and not explaining yourselves. If you're this guy's sensei then make him apologize for being a rude little perv. Guy just stood up and crossed his arms while laughing in a patronizing way, well well, I get it. So this is the famed Team S ha. Huh? Impressive looking armor you guys have got there, though for a taijutsu specialist it would just get in the way. Then to all three teams Guy appears to be standing there one moment, and in the next his voice was coming from behind them. Speed, is most important. After all, a person skilled in taijutsu relies on their skills to defend them and allows the body freedom of movement. Which is why you lost today, Sasuke. Sasuke turns to glare at him while Guy continues to brag, speed is key to any ninja, and Lee has got it. 
Since he is learning from me he knows all about getting past each of your Sharingan. After all, I am and will ever be the eternal rival of Kakashi. This news makes each member of Team S whisper among themselves, and as if Guy didn't hear them he continued to give his speech. Kakashi and I go way back, and we challenge each other on a regular basis. Although last time I checked I was far ahead, after all I train each and every day to reach my full potential. But anyway, back to you Lee. You not only tried to use a forbidden technique but you have disrupted these students from turning in their application form so I believe a much harsher punishment is in order. Now run the school field, and let's make it 5 h-u-n-d-e-r-e-d laps. Yes sir Guy Sensei, I will follow the r-i-g-h-t-i-o-u-s path you have set out before me. Lee adopted the same nice guy pose his teacher was in as they stared and gave each other a thumbs up. They stayed like this until they turned to give Team S a nice guy pose and Guy started to say, why don't you three take Lee's example of the power of youth and join him in his challenge too. Guy didn't get to finish when he felt Lee poking him in the arm and say, ah sir, they left. They're up there. Guy follows where Lee was pointing and can see Team S walking up to the stairwell on the second floor. And when Team S notices that they were being stared at Sasuke calls out, we got places to be rather than spend time with a couple of closet cases. Then Naruto huffs out a quick laugh and says, and we don't care if you're Kakashiclops's rival or not, plus there's no way we can take a ninja with such stupid hair seriously. You guys look like you belong to the village hidden in the Legos. And with that last statement Naruto started laughing hysterically as he slammed the door behind him leaving two stunned looking ninja staring wide eyed and mouths hanging at the spot Naruto was just standing. While Team S was climbing the steps they could barely hear the sounds of their footsteps above the laughter. Sakura had even joined in the laughter, and she made Naruto laugh even harder when she created a light genjutsu of two Lego versions of the green spandex ninja hugging each other and crying. Even Sasuke smiled and chuckled. Then the reality that he was just beaten by that embarrassing ninja came back to him. Shut up, both of you. Sakura looks up at him and raised an eyebrow, oh come on Sasuke, it was pretty funny. Naruto steps up next to Sakura and folds his arms raising his eyebrow to perfectly mimic her. Yeah Sasuke, it not our fault you got beat up by a kid in his underwear. Sasuke grits his teeth at the both of them and says, I said shut it. It just pisses me off that this is the problem Kakashi warned us about the Sharingan, or do you two not remember? Both Sakura and Naruto look at each other and have the same memory of Kakashi's training last week. He warned that the Sharingan did show you the before image of your attacker, thus giving you the opportunity to react in time to dodge, block, or counter attack. But if the person you are fighting is faster than you, then seeing a punch coming doesn't mean you're going to get your cheek out of its path. Kakashi had then started them on fast speed drills, attaching their ankles to long stretchy cords with boulders on the ends while running and kicking, being forced to outrun tigers in the mountains with stakes in their belts. They even were made to run on logs in the river, but soon stopped after Kakashi told them he was just joking about this training and he just wanted Naruto to take a bath. Now Team S follows Sasuke up the last few steps to the real third floor as he talks over his shoulder at them. And even as ridiculous as that guy looks he did have a good point. This armor may be good in a heavy fight but we didn't think about them slowing us down and hindering our movement. We need to be faster than our enemies and none of us trained to move in these. Naruto snorts at him and says, I don't know what you're talking about. These were made by ninja and the movement is fine. If anything we just weigh a little more than normal, but if that's your excuse for being beaten by a guy who looked like he had an atomic wedgie. But before Sasuke could yell at Naruto they hear and see Kakashi leaning against the wall at the end of the hall. Well it's a good thing then that I talked to Naruto about this ahead of time. Did you bring them Naruto? Sakura and Sasuke look back and forth between them as Naruto walks forward to meet Kakashi and puts small pieces of rectangular paper in his hand. Naruto takes the remaining pieces of paper and sticks one to seam on his collar, and the other to the back of his chest plate where no one could see. Then with a hand sign Naruto's armor disappears in a pop of smoke. Then smirking at Sakura and Sasuke's surprised faces he raises his hand to the spot where he attached the other piece of paper. Before he touches his finger to the cloth, Naruto's teammates could see that the piece of paper had disappeared. 
but when Naruto pinched that spot the kanji that was on the paper glowed for half a second on the fabric and then with another pop the armor appeared perfectly attached to Naruto's body. Kakashi decided to explain, you see I brought up the idea to Naruto when I inquired just how much he knew about sealing, and I remembered a jutsu the fourth Hokage had created to allow ninja to change clothes in an instant. With my help I showed Naruto the formula and he was obviously able to come up with the seals for you each in time. Kakashi gave Sakura and Sasuke two pieces of paper each. Sasuke put his on his shirt over his heart and Sakura attached her piece of paper to her skirt at thigh level. Testing them out they each make the hand sign making their armor disappear and reappear with a pinch. Sakura smiles at Naruto, this is brilliant Naruto. This is even more cool than just having the armor on. And before she can make the hand sign to dismiss her armor, Kakashi holds up a hand. Now each of you listen. It was a good idea to wear those, intimidation is a sound tactic after all. But as Sasuke pointed out, they can hinder your movement. Especially when stealth is required, it is a lot easier to not make a sound without metal clanking together. With these new seals it will give each of you greater accessibility to these tools. But I would like you each to enter this room wearing your armor to not only make an impression but to show a unified front. Many of the ninja in this room have been training years for this day. Some are skilled, some don't belong here, and some are even desperate. And most of them will have heard of Team S. With all three of you here you can attend the exams now, and do it making an impression on your future opponents. Kakashi looks at each of them in the eyes, and seeing the determination he knew they were ready. I'm proud of you three, now show the ninja world what you can do. Kakashi steps out of their way and watches his team march towards the door. And seeing Naruto from behind Kakashi could tell the boy was going through hand signs for a jutsu but couldn't tell which one. Then Naruto rolls his shoulders back and sends a very weak wind shock wave at the double doors making them swing open with a loud slam. Team S walks in without a pause in their steps to look at the room full of ninja who had all turned around fast with some pulling out kunai to look at the source of loud noise. Then they stop with Naruto in the middle arms crossed over his armored chest. Sasuke was to his right with hands on his hips and a serious expression on his face. Sakura adopted the same stance as Sasuke's but with a lean on one hip making hers more feminine. After Naruto could see that everyone in the room was staring at them he raised one hand to point at the whole room and say. I am the demon of the leaf, and you're all in dead. Outside in the hallway Kakashi had been watching their entrance, and by the time Naruto had begun his little declaration the doors had swung closed. But the volume of Naruto's voice could easily be heard through the wooden door making Kakashi chuckle at his antics. Naruto, that wasn't the kind of intimidation that I would have gone with, but that will do just fine. Back in the room Sasuke and Sakura were both inwardly cursing Naruto for announcing himself instead of Team S. But all three of them were too busy returning many death glares back. The reaction to Naruto's words in the room full of Genin Ninja was mixed. Some who were already nervous about the test turned with wide eyes to look. Others, many others, had taken the challenge and were sending their own fierce expressions back. Some had the look of someone who really wanted to fight, and some looked murderous. Each member of Team S could feel each other's vibrating chakra, and using that as a signal they each activate their Sharingan in unison. And just like they practiced, each of them contributed to the low genjutsu Kakashi taught them without moving a muscle. With the three of them standing there it seemed that the light behind them was steadily getting darker. The walls began making sounds like they were cracking starting from where Team S stood and moving out towards the rest of the room bringing the darkness with it. Around the ninja the room was turning into something out of a scary movie, some of the genin began to cry out in fear and others were shaking. Then the entire affect is lost when everyone in the room hears, O-S-A-S-U-K-E, there you are. They all see Ino come out of nowhere to jump onto and wrap her arms and legs around Sasuke. Sakura turns and growls at Ino, Naruto just looks disappointed, and then Shikamaru with Chuji and Toe walk up next. Shikamaru stops to look at Naruto and says, you're always saying something insane Naruto, besides your appearance you haven't changed have you? Naruto looks back at Shikamaru after watching Sasuke try to pry Ino off of him. I see you and your team haven't changed either. Ugly here still thinks she's cute, you still look like you just woke up, and Fatty over there is still eating non-stop. Team 9 all stop as if each of them felt an electric shock. 
Both Shikamaru and Ino slowly turned their heads to look at Chuji. And just as they expected, Chuji was stuck still, hands clenched. But his eyes were a mix of emotions. Rage, fear, and more powerful than the other two, doubt. Every time Shikamaru and Ino had ever heard anyone call their teammate fat they usually had to hold him back to stop him from attacking like a bull in an open range after you just branded it. But Chuji reacted this time just as they had seen him react back in the academy when Naruto was the one to call him fat. Chuji looked Naruto right in the eyes, and Naruto looked right back with a look that just screamed, do something. Chuji felt his pride want to make him charge Naruto right now and bash his head around. But the first and only time he had tried that with Naruto was back in the academy. Some kids learned fast that calling Chuji fat was a painful mistake. But the day he tried to get retribution on Naruto for the insult was also the day he had to get the most shares of his life. Naruto wasn't overwhelmed by Chuji's natural strength and ferocity, in fact it was the other way around. Chuji was slashed with claws on his arms and back, and while he was down the ground Naruto knocked out the last of his baby teeth when he kept punching him and punching him in the face. Aruka had to rush forward in a dive to get Naruto off of Chuji. And every time Naruto would call him fat ever since, Chuji would just stare and end up looking scared down at his feet not wanting to make eye contact. Then Sakura broke everyone's tense observations when she walked up and punched Ino right in the kidney making her yelp as she let go of Sasuke and fell to the ground. Oh w, that hurt Sakura. What the hell. Sakura puts one hand on her hip and points at Ino with the other, you're pissing me off, that's what. Ino jumps to her feet but keeps a hand holding the tender spot on her back. Oh please, don't tell me you're so jealous of the fact that Sasuke would let me climb on top of him instead of you that you forgot how to be civil. Sakura snorts at Ino in a very Naruto-like way, which gets both Naruto and Sasuke's attention. Oh whatever fangirl, like I could care who Sasuke lets climb him. We were here to be serious ninja and make a strong impression to people we may have to kill at one point. But instead Princess Prissy had to come along and show us just how much of a kid she still is. Ino was taken back at this, did I just hear Sakura just say she doesn't care about Sasuke, and she was about to retort but they were interrupted by a small bark. Man oh man, could you guys make any more of an embarrassing entrance? Both teams S and 9 looked over to see team 8 with Kiba in front walking up with his ever-present Y attitude. He smiles over at Sasuke and says, well, I gotta hand it to you guys, those outfits are pretty cool. But after looking at all the death glares this room has been giving you I don't think the effect is working anymore, right Sasuke? Kiba, both Sasuke and Kiba stand with wise smiles staring each other down. Back in the academy Kiba was usually one of best at taijutsu so they were long time rivals. I still think that everyone in this room takes me more seriously than a guy with a living hat. Akumaru, Kiba's dog partner barks his cute little yip at Sasuke in defiance from on top his favorite perch on Kiba's head. The dog boy just smiles and keeps staring, I don't know lover boy, you might get distracted from all the female attention you're getting that someone just might sneak up on you from behind and you're done. Naruto looks unimpressed and says, nice comeback dog breath. Kiba clenches his fist and fury stretches on his face as he says, oh yeah, why don't you shut up before I... But he doesn't get to finish because Ino interrupts when she asks, Hey Kiba, I've always wanted to ask you guys this. Are you and Naruto cousins? Kiba is so shocked by the question he almost shouts, What the hell are you talking about? We aren't related at all. I'm pretty sure my clan has never had any crazy people in it before. Naruto smirks at this and says, You guys live with dogs and you're calling me crazy, I don't know how you guys can get past the smell. Kiba wants to retort but Shikamaru interrupts, well the mystery continues, I was pretty sure that he was a cousin of the Inazuka clan since he has claws and fangs like you. Hell, even your eyes have the same slits. Kiba just shakes his head making Yakamaru bark in surprise, never had no red eyes, wild animal smelling cousin before. From out behind Kiba walked Shino, and the quiet boy said, this question has been brought up before. Because of your traits Naruto, many have questioned if you're a member of a clan. Then Kiba steps up and says, you know come to think of it, I can't remember you ever saying your last name before. So what is it? Naruto looks at Kiba, then at everyone else there who was staring at him waiting to hear the answer. 
And Naruto answers them the same way he always did when the subject came up, bite me. Somewhere outside the academy a crow flies cawing by and the other members of the Rookie Nine were so silent they could hear it. Then the silence is broken by everyone present when some send insults to Naruto and others ask each other questions. The chaos stopped abruptly when everyone just barely heard Hanata speak over the chatter over the chatter. Then Ino asks, come again Hanata. Kiba turns with a step, and that was all it took for everyone to see the small dark blue-haired girl who was standing behind him poking her fingers together while looking shy at the ground. I said, dot his name, dot it's, dot it's Uzumaki. That's Naruto's, last name. Naruto just stares at the small girl looking puzzled. Kiba was right after all, he usually tried very hard to not introduce himself to people. Naruto Uzumaki was his human name, and he really didn't like referring to himself as such so he didn't. It had been years since the last time he had told someone that his last name was Uzumaki, and she remembers. Shino gets everyone's attention when he says, so the answer to the mystery leads to more intrigue. Now since we know your last name we all know you don't belong to a clan familiar with this village. Naruto had enough, look, drop it people. If you guys feel the need to call me something then call me Demon of the Leaf. That suits me just fine. Oh so you're the Demon of the Leaf. The Rookie Nine all look at the tall newcomer, except Naruto's eyes linger on Hanata. And when her eyes meet his just for a moment before looking down again is when Naruto turns to take a look at the guy interrupting their conversation. He wore a dark purple shirt and pants with a sash tied with a slant around his waist. The older teen ninja was wearing glasses and had grey spiky hair that kinda reminded him of Kakashi. And he smelled like, well it nice to see a team of celebrities joining us this year for the exams. It should make things more interesting don't you think? Naruto knew that this guy was talking directly to him, trying to get a response out of him. But the smell of this guy and brought up old instincts that were dulled by his human form but still strong enough to send warnings ringing in his head. He smelled like a snake, and snakes are not to be trusted. Naruto doesn't even answer, instead he just looks into the stranger's face as he continues to speak to the rest of the group. So this must mean you all are the nine rookies, am I right? Sasuke had noticed Naruto's apprehension and decided to take the lead. Why are you so interested huh? You're the one who came over here, aren't you supposed to give us your name first? Kabuto looked a little surprised and then embarrassed as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Oh sorry about that. That was rude of me, and I hate rude people too. My name is Kabuto Yakushi. Pleased to meet you all. And truth be told, it's not really me who's interested. In case you guys hadn't noticed since you all started talking, then you should take another look around. When the nine genin did look around they saw that most of the room was still sending them death glares. And the one team that have not yet been assigned assassination or ninja battles yet felt the full brunt of killing intent being sent their way. Looking around they could see multiple teams with a look in their eyes that said we're planning on killing you. Kabuto pulled six of them out of their fear-filled thoughts when he said, well, I guess no one should blame you. I mean you guys are rookies and have never been here before so why should you know how things work? Sakura had an eyebrow raised and was looking annoyed. Kabuto, is it? You know you have an annoying way of saying things. But reading between the lines of what you said, it's not your first time being here is it? Kabuto smiled at her much the way Kakashi did. Eyes closed in upside down smiles, and mouth stretched into a sincere smile that to Sakura seemed a little practiced. Well, the truth be told, it's my seventh attempt. It's embarrassing I know but it has given me an opportunity to use my talents to prepare for this time around by gathering information. This gets everyone's attention again as Kabuto explains, you see I've been in this test before, I know the things to expect and I even have information on just about everyone here. Since lots of these guys have been at other Chunin exams before, I know all their secrets. And I keep them all here. Kabuto holds out in his hand for all to see a thick stack of cards. Reaching A for a card in a blur of speed he holds it up between his fingers, showing the blank face of the card. Then throwing it up in the air makes a hand sign and when the card falls back down it lands perfectly in between his awaiting fingers. And right before their eyes a person's picture and their stats appear on the card like magic. On these cards I have information on pretty much everyone here, including you guys of course. 
So since I'm feeling so sorry for you guys then I'll let you ask me anything you want. No thanks, Naruto looks up into the surprised face of Kabuto and continues to say, you smell like deceit, and trickery. It's probably just misinformation to trick us, or you're trying to get friendly with us so you can get in close to get something. Either way, I don't like you. And with that last word Naruto walked a few steps to the wall and leaned against it looking bored. I have some questions, Sasuke had stepped up to Kabuto and the look of angered disappointment that was there for a moment changed back to his smile. So, what did you want to know? Sasuke narrows his eyes and pulls his lips in a sneer before he says, I want information on two ninja. One's a leaf nin named Rock Lee, and the other is Gara from the Sand Village. Yeah sure, that's easy. And without a shuffle or even looking, Kabuto swipes his hand across the deck of cards like he was knife striking it. And in his hand were two cards between his fingers. Show them to me. As Kabuto sends his chakra into the cards they show their hidden information and he tells everyone listening what he learned about the two ninja. Naruto was half listening to Lee's taijutsu stats and Gara's mission record while he was deep in thought. So Gara has a mission record similar to mine, and without a scratch on him too. That could be the Shukaku sand armor that was so hard to break through. He'll have to think of a jutsu similar to the demon beast bomb to penetrate that shield of sand. And, this guy could be a problem, he's showing us way too much interest and is trying to be friendly just a little too hard. He does actually smell like a snake too, I hate that. Naruto looks up to see what they were doing now. Kabuto had a map shown on one of his cards and he was explaining all the villages that took part of the Chunin exams. With all of the great nations sending their ninja to this exam it gives chances to adjust international relations and equalize the balance of power. Though sometimes a small village that's pretty unknown will sign up from time to time, like this new sound village that sprung up recently. There isn't much information on those people so any person approaching them should be cautious. Kabuto looks up at each of them and smiles again saying, well with all my information we should have an easier time of getting through this right. He laughs at this and rubs the back of his head as the eight remaining ninja take in the lethal information with a little apprehension. Then Sasuke and Sakura both hear three very familiar tapping sounds. It was the sound of a ninja sandal tapping once on the toes, then once on the heel, and again on the toes rapidly. It was Naruto, and the sound was a signal they had worked up to tell each other that an attack was coming they didn't see. Both Sakura and Sasuke activate their Sharingan at the same time, and looking out into the crowd they can see the three ninja with the sound symbol on their foreheads on the move. Then with a bend of their knees both Sasuke and Sakura moved back with a slide to stand in front and on either side of Naruto. This got everyone's attention and Kabuto turned in time to see he needed to move or get hit by three kunai thrown by the sound nin in the air above him. When Kabuto comes to a sliding stop another ninja appears in front of him and tries to hit him with a punch but misses. But to three sets of Sharingan they could see the vibrating pulse of chakra that surrounded the sound nin's arm had stuck to the side of Kabuto's head. In the next few seconds Kabuto's glasses break, his ears start to bleed, and the contents of his stomach empty on the floor. Shocked faces are seen all around. Some of the ninja watching from the desks were trying to figure out the jutsu they just saw. Kabuto looks up to see the three sound nin, all of them were wearing the same purple camo pattern but couldn't be more different. One hunched forward had all but his left eye wrapped up like a mummy with a strange fur cape. The next was a sadistic looking man in his twenties with forearm guards and the kanji for death written on his shirt. And last was a severe looking woman with long ash colored hair that had an evil smile pulling at the corners of her mouth. We are from the sound village, said the mummy looking one. You don't want to ever insult us where we can hear you, and we can hear pretty far, said the girl. And just a heads up to all you babies, the ninja from the village hidden in the sound will be leaving here Chunin. Get in our way and you're gonna pay, said the wise looking man. By now some of the other ninja without strong nerves were starting to get antsy. Too bad for them because the next thing to happen was a large but not loud explosion of smoke fills the front of the classroom. In the center of the thinning smoke a strong and commanding voice yells out, you there, stop what you are doing. WHO gave you permission to fight. So do you want to be disqualified before we have even started? The sound nins say a few very insincere apologies, and Ibiki not really caring went right on. All right everybody listen up, each of you will be getting a number and that number is where you sit. 
Now everyone take a seat, those without a seat in 60 seconds gets disqualified. The room sprang into motion, Ninja was scrambling around each other to get a number and find their seats. And in under a minute everyone was sitting silent and still with eyes forward as Ibiki taped the chalkboard with his piece of chalk. Alright listen carefully I hate repeating myself so I'm only going to say this once, and no questions either. I am Ibiki Marino, I am proctor for this phase of the Chunin exams this test will be a written exam made up of 10 questions, and each one of you starts this test with a score of 100%. For every mistake you make you lose a 10% score until you reach zero. Not only that but you're tested not just individually but as a team as well. So if any one member of your team receives a zero the entire team fails too. Now I'm sure you have noticed the sentinels position throughout the room, they are to keep you honest. They will mark down every time you are caught cheating, and after the third time you're out. The paper before you has the nine questions written down, the tenth and final question to this phase of the Chunin exam will be given to you in the last ten minutes. You have one hour to finish the exam. And to the amazement of some of the ninja who were paying attention, right when Ibiki pauses the clock turns exactly 12 o'clock noon and the big man yells, begin, right before the first second is hit with a loud click. Perfect timing. Then the room fills with the sounds of papers flipping over and pencils scratching away. Naruto sits leaning back with his eyes closed thinking on everything the exam proctor just said. Then he leans forward to flip over and read the first problem. And then the next one, and the next, and the next until he read all nine. Then looking up at Ibiki as he stands there at the front of the class, the older man with scars on his face caught Naruto's eye and he smirked sadistically. Thinking with thoughts laced with firestorm status rage, Naruto internalizes what he would like to say to the Jonin. You piece of trash. I remember you from my interrogations after the wave mission. I remember you using your torture genjutsu on me to flay my skin and pull my teeth out. Now I have to pass your test, and I can only answer a couple of these. The others are math related that require calculation variables that are not given. Like the shuriken diagram here. I have to compute the angles of trajectory of a shuriken thrown at three points which rely on the wind speed as an important variable. But the wind speed variable isn't listed here, so are we supposed to guess? There have got to be only a few people including Sakura in this room who could understand these problems. Leaning forward to rest elbows on the desk with his chin on his thumbs and holding his folded fingers under his nose he stared forward but focused instead on what his peripheral vision could show him. Around him were ninja scratching their heads, others staring wide-eyed at their papers, some furiously writing, and some looked like they wanted to cry. So it's not just me, most of the people in this room can't understand these questions too. It's almost like they're daring us too, oh, oh that's it isn't it. It doesn't make any sense for us to be doing a written test for a ninja exam. We have to beat this test as ninja, and if a ninja doesn't have what he needs for victory he steals it. Daring to look over at the sentinels sitting with their eyes trained forward he can see them looking at multiple people, and the one in his row was looking directly at Naruto. The Chunin seemed to be waiting for him to show any sign of cheating with his pencil up at the ready. Now it all makes sense. A ninja must see through deception. With the guards watching our every move for a sign of cheating, and the test that's near impossible to answer. And with us being allowed to be caught cheating not once but twice means that is the secret of passing this exam. I have to steal the answers from someone. Turning his head just enough both ways he could see Sasuke and Sakura were too far away for him to try to see their papers. Sakura was furiously writing her answers so she obviously had the brains. Sasuke was moving his eyes around and the moment they connected eye to eye Naruto could tell Sasuke got the truth too. Letting his eyes sweep across the room back to looking at his paper in front of him he learned a lot about the room. He could see hands under tables passing notes. Some of the older kids in the rows of desks were slowly and confidently filling out the tests. Others were even using near invisible wires to move contraptions he couldn't move his head to see. So that was it, he made up his mind. If the idea is to cheat then it wouldn't surprise me if there are a few in the crowd placed here to have the right answers. And as luck would have it I think there's one right in front of me. This is going to be Ayers. N Naruto. It was just barely a whisper. In fact, ninja were trained to talk just loud enough for someone standing next to you to hear but not let your voice carry, and this was even quieter than that. Looking over next to him was Hanata. 
Naruto was thinking it was strange he didn't notice her there, but then again that was Hanata. Even when she was in a large group her years of shyness has taught her to position herself so that she could just barely be seen. So it was normal for Hanata to be overlooked. But now as she nervously nibbled on her lower lip she kept looking up out of the corner of her eyes at Naruto's, trying to maintain eye contact. Then she whispers again, I, I, um I mean. Naruto wasn't a patient person, and normally he would have yelled at her to spit it out but he had to swallow that impulse or be labeled a cheater. So he said a little meaner than he actually intended, what do you want little mouse? Hanata's eyes go wide for a second, then her face turns sad and she looks down at her lap whispering, Gominasai. Looking at her Naruto narrows his eyes in confusion. He hated weakness, and right now his anger was bubbling to the surface as he started thinking about everything he hated about Hanata. What a useless girl, she wants to ask me something but can't even find the strength to say it. Her pale eyes and pink lips are trembling in her fear, and she looks like she is going to cry. Well knock it off you weak little mouse, or the next time you pull this crap on me I'll just smack you first. Naruto turns his head back to his paper looking annoyed and he can't help himself but run through all the random memories of the girl. And every image he could bring up was the same. That embarrassed expression, her fingers pushing together nervously as her foot pokes at the ground. Her soft sweat voice that can barely be heard. He was about to internalize some more insults about the girl, but in his last breath he took the air deep and long through his nose. And all thought stopped as he savored the bouquet of smells. He learned years ago in this academy all the disgusting smells of humans. Being stuck in a room of children with questionable hygiene and flatulence had been the most torturous for him in the early days. But once in a while he would pick up the distant smell of a small garden. Those smell were what would save his nose in the miasma of scents from humans. He would concentrate as hard as he could on the smell of jasmine, lilacs, and the strongest of all, lavender. And all three of those smells were very powerfully concentrated right next to him. In the next few moments as memories rush through his mind Kurama Naruto feels something he hasn't felt in a very long long time. Stupidity. He felt utterly and completely stupid in this one moment as all the puzzle pieces came together in his mind as he turns his head to stare at Hanata with a mixture of shock, awe, and wonder. And when Hanata summoned enough courage to look up she ended up stuck staring at the look she was getting from Naruto. Naruto's mind was still racing with what he had just figured out. He knew this smell from years of being in the academy, hell he even smelled her a few times passing her in class. And memories of that smell lingering around places he would go came flooding back. The cakes left at his doorstep each year on the day the hockage said was his birthday. His lost sandal at his desk after recess. And a strong breeze coming through the trees at his back hitting his nose after trying and failing training exercises. Naruto even remembered smelling the scent the day he left the village for the wave mission. At all these times he had been focused on what he was doing, but his sense of smell was still strong. For many years he had been picking up trace amounts of this mixture of floral perfume taking a moment every time to savor the scent. He had always thought he was smelling some plants nearby but it was her. This girl has been following me, giving me things, for years. Naruto was still staring into Hanata's eyes like he was mesmerized, and there is no one who looks at me with eyes like hers. She isn't hiding anything from me. Everyone has always looked at me with hostility, fear, anger, distrust, or with deceit to hide those emotions from me. But now that I think about it, she never has. She is looking at me right now with a nervous searching expression. Her eyes tell me that she wants to listen to me speak, and I actually believe she would really listen. With Naruto's full attention on her he drew in her scent once more. And a strange sensation went through him. When his mind smelled the lavender if gave him a comforting feeling, but at the same time his heart rate began to quicken. Still feeling her scent in his nose he was picking apart the individual smells as the molecules attached to his nasal cells. And now with her staring at him he was getting a full dose of, hormones, she's pumping out hormones right now. It smells so. Naruto's next thought snaps him back to reality and he breaks his stare with Hanata when he quickly looks back to the front of the room. And dead center in front was Ibiki staring at him with a questioning look on his face. He shakes his head as he turns away and Naruto is sure he heard the man say under his breath, teenagers. Naruto looked down at the pencil he was twirling around in his fingers. 
If she pumps out hormones when I stare at her, then doesn't that mean she wants to mate with me? Hanata, Naruto just barely whispers but she turns to look at him out of the corner of her eyes like him, what did you want to say? I'm sorry for being rude. Her eyes light up for a few moments as a mulude of emotions run across her face but her thoughts converged on a single fact, Naruto's, talking to me, and he is being kind. I have never seen him be kind to anyone. What does this mean? I, ah, uh, I mean, she had to stop with a muffled murmur. Naruto stared patiently at the shy girl and started wondering if speaking causes the girl pain or not. I just, dot you haven't written anything yet, dot it's been over 30 minutes already, if you want. I'll let you read off mine. Naruto's eyes widen at this, and with a flash of his Sharingan he didn't have to move to copy everything on her paper. Thanks, I just did. Hanata's nervousness had all but disappeared as she saw Naruto's two comma marks open, so, dot it's true, dot you do have the Sharingan. That's amazing. Naruto looked at her with a mixture of confused amusement, and while thinking about her he really couldn't find any reason to hate her. This girl may be a little mouse, but she wanted to help me. Why are you helping me, Hanata? He could tell that she wanted to look away, but she held her ground and kept eye contact to say, no one helps you, at least not that I've ever seen. And all those times, I saw you could have used someone's help, and I wanted to, dot but. I, Hanata, since you have done this for me you may ask me any favor you want in the future. But I owe you just one, so think carefully what you want. Then Naruto sees something he has never seen this close before directed at him, Hanata's face beams with a truly happy smile. Then out of the corner of his Sharingan he could see a Chunin examiner raise his arm with a kunai in his hand. Both of his eyes flit over to scan the ninja. After his Sharingan examines where the Chunin was aiming Naruto raises his hand to push Hanata back and while he leans back a kunai flies between them to embed in the test paper of the ninja sitting behind them. The ninja's scream was enough to startle everyone into looking up. Three strikes and you're out. Number 54, failed. Now you and your teammates get out. And that was the start of kicking out the bad cheaters. Around the room examiners were getting in people's faces and yelling at them that they, failed. Some ninja didn't take kindly to the treatment and they were sent limping out with their teammates dragging them along. The herd was thinning. Naruto took advantage of the time to write down all the answers he copied off of Hanata's paper. When he was finished he just leaned back with his arms behind his back sending a bikia look that said this test was no big deal. Naruto watched the room with his Sharingan, catching a few glimpses of cheetahs. When the clock was 30 seconds away, Naruto started to wonder what the final question could be. If the first part of the test was to see through deception to show how good we can cheat, then the next part will probably have some hidden agenda too. Right as the clock ticked 10 minutes to 1 o'clock Ibiki got everyone's attention again. Alright listen up, we're going to be giving you the 10th question now. But before I do I must inform you of the terms to agreeing to hear the question. This is a final pass-fail situation everyone. You can decide not to take and answer the final question if you like, but if you do you will fail this test. And if you decide to stay and get the final answer wrong, then you will be forever banned from taking the CHUNIN exams again and stay GENIN the rest of your short lives. This got a few gasps and murmurs throughout the classroom and even Kiba stood up to yell and point as he called bullshit on the proctor. Silence, I have my reasons. So sit down and be quiet. The tenth question is crucial to this exam. In every ninja mission we face death, one decision can mean life for you and your team and another death. Just like this question may save or doom your team's careers depending on your answer. That being said, just like before if one of your team gets the answer wrong then their whole team gets kicked out of the program together. So those who want to leave raise your hands, now. Naruto looked around the room, and sure enough there were ninja with despair written on their faces. Then the hands shakily started to rise. I'm out, I can't do it. Me too sir. That's it, maybe next year. Naruto laughed internally at the gutlessness of these wannabe ninja. Then Ibiki walked two steps to his left and turned looking directly at Naruto with a piercing gaze. Are you sure you want to risk it? Can't get any respect if you're a genin for life. Ibiki's words have brought Naruto's anger to the surface, and Naruto lunges forward to slam both palms on his desk and yell, Shut up you raisin-headed son of a. You're all talk anyway, just as I proved to you before you sadist, 
No amount of force or torture can make me do anything. So knock it off with the scare tactics because one of these days you're going to be looking up at me. Believe it. Abiki was amazed at how resilient Naruto was, he interrogated the boy himself and could barely get a response out of him. Then Abiki looked at the room full of committed expressions being sent his way. Very well, if there is no one else that wants to quit then there is just one thing left to tell you. And that is you have all passed the first exam. And just like Abiki had planned he gets a room full of stunned faces giving him many dumb looks. Wait a second, what about the tenth question? Naruto looks back to see the San Nin Temari looking pissed at Ibiki. Oh, and I figured everyone here was smart enough to understand the final challenge of this test. While many of you I'm sure realized early, this test was asking questions that more than likely many of you have never seen before. And since it was nearly impossible for all of you to pass you needed to find the only other way to get the answers without knowing them, cheat. And that was the real reason for your allied examiners, to weed out the unskilled. Only exceptional ninja can collect information under these circumstances. But the final question was to test something in you that in my opinion is even more important than your ability to spy, your strength of will. When you are given a mission from your village, you are expected to carry out your mission with honor but most of all success. Let's say you are given a mission, you must steal an important doent. You don't know how many enemies you will encounter and you know they are heavily fortified. Now do you just sail past and walk away just to save your own neck and the lives of your team? No, you think only of finishing your mission. You gather the information and you carry out your mission because success is life, victory means the safety of your village and your family. In this life you have chosen, you will most likely die by the edge of a blade. So we live our lives unafraid of the consequences and concentrate on what is truly important to a ninja, what they can accomplish before that end. After looking around at the genin and seeing strength and belief shining back in many of their eyes he knew the test was a success. Then there is nothing left for me to tell you than congratulations fro passing the first phase of the chunin exams. And now to usher you into the next phase one would like to introjic. Abiki never finished his sentence when he saw a spinning ball of cloth come crashing right through the window. Glass was spinning through the air as the ball unrolled to reveal a woman. When she came to a stop she yelled, head up boys and girls because the boring stuff is over and now is the time to spill some blood. And as the sign says, I am Anko Mitarashi the second proctor of the CHUNIN exams. Are you guys ready? Good then follow me. Anko stood there with her fist in the air wondering why she wasn't hearing cheers of excitement. And right when the clock hit one o'clock is when Abiki leaned around the cloth Anko had been wearing a few seconds ago that was pinned to the ceiling with two kunai. You're early, again. Anko makes a face and the Jonan talk among themselves and the Jenin listen when they hear Anko say that less than half of the Jenin would make it through her test. All right you bunch of maggots, quit your chit chat and follow me. And so the remaining teens followed Anko. They kept walking until the group was well out of the village. And they didn't stop until the group of ninjas stood in front of a giant metal fence that surrounded a forest of trees that were much taller and larger than the trees outside the village. Kiba along with everyone else was looking up and whistled then said, welcome, to Jurassic Park. Anko turns around to laugh at him, niece try kid, that place would be too much of a vacation, but this place where you all will be taking the second test. And it's called the Forest of Death. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.